Hello and welcome. Today I'm here with my friend Charlene, whom some of you will recognize from when we collaborated in the Power of Solitude event, which I so enjoyed doing with her. And today we wanted to collaborate again because we enjoyed that so much. Today we're going to be talking about ritual. Um, I wanted to talk about how we can bring ritual to our yoga practice. So I think we're going to start by, um, Charlene's a creativity coach. And uh, we're just going to start by talking about, you know, what is the power of ritual and why is ritual important, Charlene? Hi, Melissa. First of all, thank you so much for having me. Um, ritual, yeah. Uh, so I'm an artist, I'm a writer and a transmedia, um, transmedia artist and a creativity coach. And I used to live in an ashram for two years. So um, yoga was my life for, for two years. And um, what I learned to love there was the, the rituals, the pujas and the singing and the mantras and everything. Mm. And I always knew that rituals are really important for the soul. But there, it like to live it, to live in this ritual, because everything in an ashram is so ritualized, mm -hmm. um, gave it a completely new dimension. And when we're talking about ritual and the question, is it is it really that relevant? And I found a quote by um, Joseph Campbell, who was um, a mythologist uh, and who wrote the book Hero with a Thousand Faces. Um, and he said, if you want to find out what it means to have a society without any rituals, read the New York Times. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That sounds I'm depressing. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, you could go in a bunch of directions with that. I'm not sure what it means, but <laughs> it sounds derogatory, though. <laughs> yeah, I, I was actually wondering what he would say now. Like, I mean, he mm -hmm. died in the, in the 80s, so mm -hmm. right before the internet. So I'm not Maybe sure. Maybe he'd say, but... read Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> Probably, yes. <laughs> no, but on the, on the other hand, you have rituals, rituals are the language of the soul. And um, there was another thing that I was reminded of, like when you look at rituals as celebrating life, like enjoying, mm. like giving depth to life, to everyday, to everyday uh, tasks, and you ritualize them, um, it, it gives everything more meaning. Mm. And that was um, something that I I heard Selma Hayek, the actress, say about Pierce Brosnan. She actually um, she talked about how he behaved on a set, and she said that he had little rituals throughout the day, and um, almost like he was celebrating life, <laughs> not just the work. And he has to have a special cup of tea, a nice china, not styrofoam. Mm -hmm. And I love this idea so much. Celebrating life mm -hmm. by I mean, this is really very, very simple. Okay, just let me have my 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 nice china and not just a styrofoam cup. Mm -hmm. It's so easy. Yeah, and I think like when you're talking about it, it sounds to me like like the styrofoam cup might have been there, but even just taking the time with and it allows us to continue to rush around and do the thing. But the fine china asks us to slow down and appreciate the act of drinking the tea. You know, you can't take your fine china with you in the car and, and rush off, right? Or do the next thing. So I'm guessing that part of what you're gonna get into is that ritual asks us to slow down too. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> exactly. It, it does that and it doesn't start when you step onto your yoga mat. Mm. You can be in touch, like when, when, with, when we, think about yoga practice and rituals for your yoga practice then um it starts it it doesn't even start it's it is your life right mm -hmm. you can make everything in your life part of your yoga practice and the beautiful thing is is um ritual gives you power because it connects you um and so you can draw from that positivity from that energy throughout the whole day mm and when we're talking about as a creativity coach I deal a lot with blocked artists mm -hmm. um, artists and um, I, I can only imagine that as a yoga teacher you have more than one student uh, who finds it difficult to practice daily totally and I feel like um, 
I'm starting to be a lot more open about the fact that I go through phases where I get totally blocked and burned out in my own practice. I mean, of course, I've been practicing for um, up over 25 years now. And there are times when I'm like, hmm, I don't know. I don't really feel like it, you know, of course. And I go through phases and they tend to be seasonal, of course. And yeah, and I think then it's important for us to have ways to come back, you know, or yeah. So I think this is where ritual can be really interesting. Yeah. Let me share one thing that um, creativity Godfather, creativity coaching godfather and also my teacher Eric Meisel he has this beautiful trick <laughs> that he um, gives to blocked artists um, he like imagine you are that blocked that just the thought of sitting down at your desk to write something it gives you like no mm -hmm. I don't want to go there mm -hmm. and then he says just live your life and every now and then think about going your working play just think about going there just think mm -hmm. about what it would feel like to sit at that desk mm -hmm. and he actually compared it like um with religion where you for example you turn towards mecca and um just this thought alone okay i'm turning there and this is a place of positivity for me and a place where i get power from okay and i just take one deep breath and then i go on with my life mm -hmm. and i think this is not just really powerful for artists it is really powerful for somebody who who got stuck in their yoga practice as well mm -hmm. if you just integrate this okay i connect to my yoga practice now that's the space and now i'm back in my life I love I it. I love it so much and the reason why i love it is that you know there's a lot of talk in pop or culture psychology right now around tiny habits, you know, or atomic habits, or you like, you make it so small that it's doable. And I love it because it, they work, right. Mm -hmm. But they lack soul, you know, but what you've offered here with that very tiny ritual brings soul back into that tiny habit or atomic habit, you know, where, okay, we're bringing our emotional body, we're bringing our creative self, we're bringing our spiritual self, we're bringing our energetic self, you know, all the layers of the koshas to this tiny moment to acknowledge. And I feel like it's very um, energetic in that, like you mentioned, we talked a little bit about this before, when we turn to that space, we can say, wow, this space has given me, like it can be a moment of gratitude too, right? You know this space I know has given me rest, this space has given me rejuvenation, this space has given me healing. And, you know, uh, I know you're going to be talking about this, but when we take that moment to acknowledge mindfully what this space has given us, and it doesn't have to be a huge thing, it, it just shifts everything, doesn't it? Exactly. It is exactly what you said. It's all about taking the positive things that this space has given you and reminding mm. yourself of that instead of this oh, i have to go there and i have to do asanas and oh, mm. i don't really want to yeah it's really connecting to the positivity of it because it really is a powerful energy field that exists there that you have created and that you are stepping into so if there is this awareness of this you know one time i had this dream i have to share this it was an epic dream you know how sometimes you can have these like epic mythological dreams. Okay, so one time I had this dream, my students are listening to this, no, because I shared it, but uh, one of my former teachers who passed uh, came to me in this dream and she told me how to approach my mat uh, like a ritual. And she told me how to like walk around my mat and breathe and uh, just take that moment. It wasn't like a big deal, but it was a big deal. You know what I mean? Like she was saying like, take time to acknowledge this sacred space before you step onto the mat. And it was like this, <laughs> oh my God, huge thing, you know? Yeah. So yeah, she came from the other side to tell me this, you know, it was very cool. It's beautiful. And, and that is exactly it. It's like you, you were celebrating entering the sacred space mm -hmm. of, that is your yoga mat. That's mm -hmm. so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I actually have 
chills. I know. And there was, it came like from that ancestral line. I know in the Kundalini, they talk about the golden chain of teachers, you know, so it came from, it was very cool. <laughs> yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. So um, with, when we go back to Eric Maisel and his um, trick of like easing yourself into, into um, going to your place of practice, I think it's also like when you, when you really, I mean, I know there were times in my, in my yoga practice where I just, no, I can't. It felt like, don't make me do that. It's it, like, it was so hard. And then I was just like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to sit here for five minutes. I'm just mm -hmm. going to sit here, not, not even going to be meditating. I'm just going to mm -hmm. sit here. And that is also something that works with artists very well when, when mm -hmm. as I said, when they are afraid of, um, uh, of, of, of their writing desk or whatever it is, just be there, just be there and align with the energy and then say, okay, you know what? Tomorrow I'm going to be here for six minutes and mm -hmm. we'll see what happens. It's, it's really, and some of these things might sound like, like you are, I don't know, like babying yourself. Mm -mm. Like, it, it is I've gone through phases like that too when I'm burned out or just not interested in practice but there's a there's a potency to it to sitting down in that space and just being there it's um deeply nurturing and nourishing yes. yeah yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. so, and it lasts uh, as long as it lasts you know yeah you don't need I mean, to put a is... number of days on it or whatever you know yeah yeah. And I think really it is easier if you if you go to the place, if you are there and at least we, yeah, I, I went to my studio today. Yay me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is, that is, otherwise it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. And mm -hmm. so no, it's just a tiny step, just mm -hmm. a small step. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so. and I love how it acknowledges the space as, as powerful, energetic and sacred too. It's very, it's very empowering. Mm -hmm. For the yeah, individual, really for each individual, right? Because then it's not something outside of yourself. It's deeply powerful within. Mm -hmm. when, when you look at Joseph Campbell again, he actually talks about how rituals connect you with the myth behind it. Mm -hmm. And um, when we're talking about yoga, we're talking about all these different energy energies um, and ways of manipulating energy. And um, if, if you through a ritual you acknowledge that what you are doing is in fact affecting the energy you connect yourself to that wisdom mm -hmm. and through the ritual um you 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 build this bridge and um you don't even like there is this point where you you don't even need to be um conscious of oh that is what i am doing because the ritual takes care of that mm -hmm. the ritual kind of like is um i completely lost my train of thought it's like a, i think it's like what you're gonna say but maybe you weren't but what i'm hearing from this is it ca it carries you right if we use that metaphor of the bridge it's like the ritual actually carries you over the bridge because it's there you know exactly mm -hmm. exactly and of course that doesn't work if you do it once or twice but if you keep at it mm -hmm. um, and even then you can you can turn it around regarding oh I, I really don't feel like practicing yoga today but when you go through the motions in the in the literal sense if you just go it you might surprise yourself by just doing it mm -hmm. even if even on, although you were not in the mood mm -hmm. because you you put yourself in the mood mm -hmm. because you're going through the ritual mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that is what I see with with blocked artists. So by just okay, I'm just gonna picking I'm just picking up my pen and I'm just holding it here, nothing more. And then all of a sudden they are writing and for <laughs> somebody who, who, who was totally blocked um, to, to just write a sentence is actually a huge success. Mm -hmm. So ritual got them there. Mm -hmm. So I think you maybe have some ideas for us for some rituals because you know, the title for this is like uh, rituals beyond burning incense <laughs> for coming to our yoga mat because yeah. I think that's like nothing against incense. No, I mean, we have nothing against incense. I mean, it's lovely. <laughs> but I think we think, okay, we start a practice, we burn a little stick of incense. Okay, there's my ritual. But I think there, <laughs> and and we and we've covered one already, right? Let's not 
dismiss the one that we've covered, which is just turning to the space and acknowledging it as sacred and powerful and energetic and healing. Um, yeah. So that's one already. Um, but you have some ideas for others as well. I do. And what I really like to do is um, just like I always have my mala with me when I'm doing yoga mm -hmm. because it's just part of my of the overall thing that I that I um, that I do japa in mm -hmm. the end. So um, wrapping the mala into a piece of cloth, it is that is actually a very good example for yes, it is meant to uh, to keep bad energy out and keep the good energy in mm. within the mala but that is really not that important but for your brain what is important is that you do these very small actions mm -hmm. that have a beginning and an end in the beginning the mala is wrapped you unwrap it and then you put it away again and it puts your mind into the right gear Mm -hmm. And for me, it is um, uh, I, I can't really do japa when when my when I don't unwrap my mala beforehand. It's mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really weird. So I think that actually brings me to the point: if everything can be a ritual, as mm -hmm. long as you do it mindfully. Mm -hmm. And if you look at all the actions that you are do, doing, like um, getting dressed for your practice, mm -hmm. rolling out your mat, um, if you do these mindfully, really with the awareness for the beginning and the end of whatever action it is that you're doing you are transforming this um menial task into a ritual mm -hmm. um i like to have uh, a special playlist for my practice mm -hmm. um that music is so powerful mm -hmm. and also that is something that can connect you to that space to that mind space mm -hmm. very easily when you're not there. You can sit in your office or your car and um, have that same playlist on and it will do something. Um, of course, essential oil. I, I love using oils. Um, and um, I would like to put a lot of emphasis to the begin and the end of, of your practice mm -hmm. so that you have like a way to end it. I mean, most often we do it with a mantra Mm -hmm. But you can actually do it with whatever you want. I like to use a poem uh, or you can even use a so song lyrics. I mean, there's so much beauty out there mm -hmm. and um, you can draw from that. And whatever gives you like this sense of I am there and I am not alone because somebody else actually wrote these words and, and shared them mm. with me. That is that is like, I think this is just beautiful to do. To, um, to play around with this and um to me in the beginning it was like oh am i allowed like to to um not to use a mantra but use mm -hmm. something worldly as a poem mm -hmm. uh, but it worked beautifully for me and so that's mm -hmm. why i actually kept it yeah i read poems at the end of almost every one of my yoga classes so i think my students will be like oh yeah yeah poems yeah okay <laughs> but yeah. i like the way that you're marking ritual as a way to open the door to practice and then close the door to practice as in saying that, okay, this is a special time. This is a sacred time and I'm going to acknowledge it as such. And also I like that you brought in clothing because I got to say, I'm often like roll out of bed, come in my jammies. And it like, you know, there's something about that that is simple. Yes. And comfortable. Yes. But it doesn't, mark the occasion as special or sacred you know and so i think that having the clothes that uh, are beautiful to you that are sacred you know that are yeah i think that really marks the occasion as like yeah this is important to me this is beautiful to me and if it's something that we do every day then why wouldn't you have clothes for it you know mm -hmm. And it's a yeah. way that we can be creatively connected to it. And yeah, that's really something that I think about often. Yeah, you know, why am I wearing my kind of grubby <laughs> pajamas to this sacred practice? This seems yeah. wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think, okay, we can we can go both directions there. I mean, 
there is this it is it is very empowering to say okay i have special clothes for for this on the other side it's like okay this is so deeply embedded into my life that it doesn't matter whether i'm wearing my pajamas or something else it's yeah you can go both ways i can mm -hmm. argue both ways <laughs> yeah yeah let's not let it stop us but if it's something that would make it more special then why not right yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And it's so interesting, like, um, as I said, when I when I was in the ashram, you could see the the rituals of other people, like when they would enter like the, the morning um, satsang, and um, like with their with their wraps, and their water bottles, and the precise amount of fruit that they would take, something like that, you, there was so much ritual everywhere. And of course, like, no, you cannot touch this, it's mine. And this is actually where you where, where we are. Um, like, the soul is very much in my in my experience, it seems it seems to be very much like a child. And children like to know this is mine, you cannot have this. It's mine. <laughs> and I think if you acknowledge this and say, no, you cannot touch my mala. No, I don't want you to use it or whatever. Mm -hmm. it, it it adds to the specialty of this is mine and mm -hmm. it's important for my practice. Of course, mm -hmm. I'm of course sharing. It, it's nice to share. Mm -hmm. But this is something that I saw a lot. And um, I think it is totally OK if you're like, no, this is mine. I don't want you to or even like um, I don't want you to use my yoga mat. Don't don't practice in my space, something like that. You mm -hmm. know? So I think I think especially as women, we have a lot of things that we share, you know, and, and women that are mothers, too. There's very few things that are just your own. <laughs> You know, you're in relationship, you're in relationship with a partner, you're in relationship with your children. And then, you know, like, what is yours specifically? And um, I think that you kind of hit on something that's really important, which is that, yeah, the this solitary practice is your own. And um, it isn't something that you do with other people a lot, especially in your home when you're doing your own practice. And um, so of course it is nice to say that, yeah, that is my space and those are my things for this and yeah. And of course there can be things that connect us, right? Usually like the mala and things like that. I had my grandmother, when she passed, she gave me her pearls. My grandfather gave me her pearls and I had them made into a mala. And so, when you say that, you know, I have it sitting on my altar, but if there was, you know, some intention around connecting to it each day, it would be a way to connect with my grandmother. So I think that we all have things around us that we have connection to others with, you know, when we can, when we're more intentional and mindful about it, it can bring a lot of beauty and sacredness and connection to our practice as well. I love the this so much that you turned them into a mala, the pearls. That is really beautiful, and brings us right to to symbols and um, how symbols and rituals they go hand in hand, and something like that is like the perfect example. And it's something that you you can carry around. I mean, you said you have it on your altar, but like I can imagine that if you have a situation where you need like this extra extra kind of extra piece of luck that you might want to turn to the mala and take it with you mm -hmm. so that is really that's also something that children do a lot like they have their their favorite stuffed animal or their favorite blanket and um, and they think this is good luck for them and um, and why not I mean mm -hmm. why not and I think a lot of people like working with um, gemstones and things like that too, you know, and you could be very intentional about what kind of energy you want to bring to your practice and placing a gemstone on your mat uh, for the day as well. I think these kinds of things are really beautiful ways to just add that extra layer of intention to your practice. Yeah. yeah. I have one more thing, which is um, my favorite way of, of ending my practice. Mm. And that would actually be to have a special notebook right there in your practice mm -hmm. space and just write one sentence. And there, there are different ways. You can write like one sentence before and 
after the session or just one after the session and don't read it back for a while but when you finally when you read it back this is a great way to stay motivated because when you've just done your practice and you you did um like you grounded yourself and you were there and everything you're bound to write something positive and something beautiful mm. and um, i i really like to have these like these notes to myself hey yoga is good for you mm -hmm. is there a contemplative prompt that you use when you write or it's just whatever is top of mind when you finish your practice i try to sum up how i feel in one sentence or I may, sometimes when I'm, uh, I, I'm a very visual person, so mm -hmm. I have images running in front of my eyes basically all the time when I'm doing yoga. And uh, when there is one image that uh, stuck out a lot, then I write that down or even mm. like try to, to draw it, something like that. Mm. Um, but I don't really use a prompt. So I'm, I'm sure there are like writing prompt cards. Yeah, so. sort of more like what stood out about my practice then it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. This has been so helpful for me. I know my students are going to find it incredibly helpful. I feel, I just feel like a level of specialness and sacredness has been gifted to me for my practice because of this today. So thank you so much for this, Charlene. Uh, you're very welcome. That's oh, that's so nice to hear. <laughs> thank mm -hmm. you. <laughs> um, so thank you, everybody, for listening to this. If there's um, if people want to connect with you, how can they do that, Charlene? So I'm on YouTube um, with uh, Shalala. So I am Shalala Charlene Anders. <laughs> um, that's my YouTube channel, and on Instagram and on Twitter, uh, my handles are I am Shalala. Or you can just um, send an email uh, to hello at I am Shalala. That's fantastic. And if uh, I'll put all that in the show notes below, and we really appreciate you giving this video a like that helps us a lot sharing this with other yogis, because I think there's a wealth of information in here for people to stay motivated with the daily practice. And also if you'll put, um, Yoga is ritual in the comments. That would be fantastic as well. And subscribe to the channel and go over and subscribe to Charlene's channel as well. Thank you so much, Charlene. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs>